Hi uh, everyone, welcome to Biology Kira and today we have a lecture on neuroscience, right? Um, so we know that the neuroscience deals with nerves and the nervous system and all the functions and the structure and the manifestations of these systems all over the body. Now the main thing, the primary topic that comes up when we talk about neuroscience is the nervous system. Nervous system. So the word nervous is an adjective which comes from the word say nerve, right? What is a nerve? Nerve is a cell which transmits information, which, which can carry information. Uh, it can receive information, it can uh, send the information to a new place, it can you know, transfer information from a particular part of the body to another part of the body. Now why do we require a nervous system? Right? So that should be one of the most uh, basic and fundamental questions that uh, one may ask uh, in the given scenario. So the function of the nervous system is number one sensory. We all know that we have an interaction with our environment. So we must know when it is hot or when the environment is not suitable for our survival. All these kind of information come around from the environment to our uh, brain or the thinking mechanism through nerves and the nervous system is the most is, is the most important and the primary uh, organ system which facilitates that next the nervous system integrates information right so what type of integrate integration of information happens the sensory information that is available that comes that is new and comes to the brain or the thinking mechanism has, has got a few components right it might be what the organism is how the organism is who the organism is and all those information but then there is also a transient state of the uh, whole nervous system like the brain at a certain moment is probably thinking of something for example you are watching the lecture you are thinking about the nervous system and we are dealing with the functions of the nervous system right now so you have already learned about the sensory function right so your brain currently or you know th for, as a matter of fact the, your nervous system is integrating the information that okay i'm sitting in front of my computer or a smartphone screen and there is a lecture which is happening in which it has already been said that one of the functions of the nervous system is sensory and right now it is being said that another function of the nervous system is integration so this whole process happening right now in your brain is integration and then we move on to the most uh, visible and uh, manifested function of the nervous system that is the motor functions so what happens in a motor function is that we the brain along the spinal cord which have uh, you know divisions into gray matter and white matter i'll come to them very soon but those organs those parts of the uh, let's say regions of the nervous system have the capacity of coordinating stopping starting initiating and uh, and looking after the motor activities of the organism right so how does that happen again there are nerves as i said is the integral part of the nervous system there are neurons which uh, neurons or nerves uh, th there's there's a slight difference between these two terms we'll come to that as well so because of these structures the information from the central nervous system or the autonomous nervous system uh, goes and uh, you know uh, 
uh, manifests the physical movement of a certain part of the body so that is motor so as we can see here there are three major functions of the nervous system one is a sensory another is integration another is motor so having said that uh, you know we can next you know think about why it is important to study the nervous system at least two different diseases uh, regarding you know uh, involving the nervous system uh, one of the diseases is in the childhood or early adulthood uh, let's say it is dyslexia we will discuss this in the future lectures but another disease that we will be talking about along with dyslexia and other clinical uh, problems is probably let's say dementia so these disorders are because of the malfunctioning of the nervous system it has nothing to do with uh, any other system initially but then at a later stage you know as the disease or the disorder progresses the other or some of the other organs might also get affected but primarily the effect of these disorders are being instigated by the malfunctioning of the nervous system well uh, this is the first slide and i would not want to go much into the details right now but it is very important to know that uh, hydra is the first hydra is one of the primitive organisms having an, a, a well structured nervous system um, they have the simplest brain all right let's call the simplest brain simplest brain and it is called nothing other than nerve net nerve net all right so this uh, um, in, you know what happens is that the animal has evolved distinct networks for each reflex right so it's a very primitive arrangement and it is very very less complex than our you know human being interconnected nervous system or as a matter of fact the macaque monkey or like a giraffe or a blue whale or a bat for example so hydra has a nerve net it doesn't have really a brain but then it has the nerve net supports uh, a, you know various circuits um, and and these circuits you know have a neural activity that determines the behavior so the, the there is there is also a research which happened uh, on hydra which you know it, it establishes the fact that that you know one neuron you know no neuron was a member of more than one circuit so if you have one particular circuit there are dedicated set of neurons which would work in that particular circuit and that circuitry is connected to the nerve net all right so having said that i would also uh, like to add uh, you know that, uh, that that there is something called the uh, diffused nervous system diffused nervous system i'll write down the spelling over here d i f f u s e diffused nervous system so this nervous system is the most primitive nervous system in in this kind of nervous system what happens is that the nerve cells are distributed throughout the organism and usually they lie just beneath the outer epidermal layer and uh, and they, they do not have a brain obviously because it's very primitive but there are ganglia or very small local concentrations of neurons so the diffuse nervous system is characterized by what we call ganglia g a n g l i o n this is the singular form and if i if you replace i o n by a it becomes ganglia which is the plural of ganglion so these systems are found in nidarians like for example the hydra uh, the nerve net that is being formed is a 
is an advanced version of a ganglion you know there are many ganglions which together form the nerve net so so uh, these these nidarians you know uh, have a mesh like system of individual and separate nerve cells and fibers which are dispersed over the organism and uh, the connections occur at various points and but there is there is no interference of one particular neuron in other circuits you know one neuron is dedicated to one circuit so the transmission in the in nerve net uh, is an important point uh, is is relatively slower as compared to other nervous nervous system and uh, you know probably you know you need to give repeated stimuli to elicit a response at the synapses created by these particular neurons in a nerve net now when it comes to advanced organisms like human beings or let's say you know uh, uh, for that example uh, for for that context monkeys or zebras or whales uh, you know mammals and higher organisms we do have uh, you know we can divide our nervous system into a central nervous system which not only contains the brain but also the spinal cord right the brain and the spinal cord they have a clear distinction of gray matter and white matter in which the arrangement of the, the arrangement of the neurons is done in a such a way that all the cell bodies are together and all the axons are together so the axons are usually white in color because they do have a myelin sheath i'll come to all of these things later in this lecture in this particular lecture but it's very important to remember that white matter is consists of axons and the gray matter consists of cell bodies that's all i need i want you know you to take away from this particular sentence saying that the cns contains brain and the spinal cord the peripheral nervous system on the other hand this contains the perif this contains all the nervous system components that are uh, you know outside the brain and the spinal cord so for example your motor nerve uh, or probably the vagus nerve uh, or you know for that uh, you know there can be a nerve which controls the the lungs you know getting inflated and deflated the movement of the diaphragm and you know sp more specialized neurons which take care of more complex body functions for example ovulation or hunger or something like that you know so these are peripheral nervous systems and as everything is connected we do have something called the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system is the ans which contains both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system so the autonomic nervous system contains as you can see efferents to smooth muscles and organs efferents from cranial nerves and the spinal cord so this is an introduction to the nervous system let's move on to the next slide let's see what we have we now directly jump into the human nervous system because it is one of the most complex nervous systems around uh, the nervous system arrangement provides such a scenario that we do have various opportunities of um, you know we, we can go ahead and uh, uh, have a huge amount of intelligence and also conduct a wide spectrum of activities and everything more or less is controlled by the brain and the spinal cord so this is a human brain over here when uh, when 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 an organism is developing in an as an embryo so as you can see the frontal part of the brain this is the forebrain over here there is a midbrain over here and this is the hindbrain over here so the most important point that you should take 
from this slide is you know which i want you to uh, understand from this slide is this is the position the relative position of the brain parts there are there are n number of uh, different brain areas and we still do not know how many how big the actual number of brain regions might be uh, the researches are still going on in various laboratories all over the world in research centers and in clinicals and at clinical settings as well but right now for this particular slide i would want you to concentrate on this particular area over here uh, which i have colored with a brown ink this part is called the cephalic flexure what does the what does the cephalic flexure mean it means the area between the forebrain and the midbrain and why is it important because the cephalic flexure is being used to demarcate the various areas various areas of the brain so let's let's first look into let's first look into the forebrain so in the forebrain the frontal part is called the rostral part let's represent it by r and the you know the posterior part then is the back part is called the caudal so this part is the rostral and this part is the caudal right you know we usually say anterior as the frontal part and the posterior as the back you know part at the back so it's called rostral and caudal in this case and also um, along with these we do have uh, the dorsal and the ventral so ventral is the inferior part and dorsal is the superior part so top of the head you call it dorsal front of your head the forehead the brain area behind the forehead bone is the rostral brain uh, at the back of your head is the caudal and just over your eyes and the nose that is called the inferior or the ventral part that's the ventral most part right now when it comes to you know that is true till the forebrain till the cephalic flexure but beyond the cephalic flexure we have the midbrain and the hindbrain so in the midbrain and the hindbrain uh, again the rostral part is you know when we reach there the coordinates are not exactly you know they are para perpendicular to each other but then they are not exactly same as in case of the forebrain but then yes the caudal part of the forebrain uh, the cord um, let's say the um, the ventral caudal part of the forebrain all right i'll just put a blue uh, mark over here so this blue mark over here is the rostral is the uh, pardon me it's not the rostral is the caudal caudal is the caudal and ventral right the caudal and ventral so the caudal ventral part of the brain is the rostral part of the uh, midbrain right and similarly the part of the brain which is attached to the spinal cord that is the caudal part of the um, that's the caudal part of the midbrain or the midbrain and hindbrain and of course the back side here you know the back of your neck the brain part related to that you know we have the, our cerebellum over there is the dorsal which is posterior and just behind our uh, esophagus or like let's say like uh, the palate uh, in our mouth that part is the ventral or the anterior part now let's move on to uh, you know try to understand how the brain looks like when we uh, look at the cross sections of the brain so there are two there are actually three different cross sections of the brain uh, there's this uh, we have the horizontal cut there we have the coronal part and we have the sagittal part so i'll skip the sagittal part as of now because it's quite interesting but it is quite complex um, we'll come to that in in, in our next lectures but here we do have uh, something called the uh, horizontal cut right in the horizontal cut as you can see this part of the brain this part of the brain is here so this is the rostral part and this part of the brain is here so this is the caudal part 
and similarly um, we can see that you know this part of the brain is the dorsal and this part of the brain is the ventral so we are talking about the horizontal cut over here and the coronal cut over here right it's time to move to the next slide so in the next slide what we are talking about is specifically the cortex so the cortex has been divided into four different regions based on their functions and position so the functional localization of the brain as you can see in this particular figure on the right side corner is dependent on you know various experiments that we have held and uh, we have got Wernicke's area the area of 21 and an n number of uh, various localized regions in the brain dedicated for certain functions as you said that if you recall in the hydra a specific neuron has a specific function of being in a specific circuit similarly in the in the in the cortex there are certain ensembles of neurons which are involved in just one particular function so i mean we do not yet know what kind of a function like uh, we, we cannot find out very easily what those ensembles are but according to various researches we can however localize the functional uh, activities in the brain but according to the position and a little bit of functioning we have found out the uh, we have found out uh, some of the important parts of the brain so the frontal part of the uh, you know the forehead just behind the forehead and top part of your head that part is called the frontal lobe which is mostly administrative um, again there is a parietal lobe which has got a few uh, you know maps of the body like for example your hand is mapped somewhere near the central sulcus this is the central sulcus by the way CS this is the central sulcus and the occipital lobe is mostly involved in let's say you know just for you to remember this involves the eye right the vision and the temporal lobe again here it contains you know various uh, uh, ensembles of neurons which help us to you know keep track of time so we will come to all of these at later parts of the lecture in an advanced course as well but we must know these four parts of the cerebrum right so you know what happens inside the cerebrum is still very much unknown to us we will try to find out how the things work over there so in order to sum up let's say we have a frontal lobe right we have a parietal lobe we have a parietal lobe we have an occipital lobe occipital lobe and we do have a temporal lobe we do have a temporal lobe so these parts are very important for us to understand uh, you know that in, in 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 smaller classes you might get questions asking these four the, the four names and if you are uh, uh, you know an advanced student probably in your masters or in, in an adv in the later years of your bachelors you might be asked to demarcate specific areas in these lobes right so next let's move to the next slide again right uh, we do not have much information in this slide given but this slide is very important for us to understand because this is how the effect the effector cells work you know i had mentioned about motor uh, so this neuron here is called the motor neuron what does a neuron do a neuron takes information through its you know uh, beginning initial part of the neuron so this part of the neuron is the initial part of the neuron right it takes information through these structures over here and what it does is that it relays the information through its long shaft uh, it information through its long shaft and it uses the posterior part you know the later part of the neuron to give this information to the uh, target organ so again here what you see is that uh, there is an interaction of the neuron with an external organ the interaction looks something like this this is called the 
uh, neuromuscular junction so just to give you a rough idea about what goes on here we need to understand what a synapse mean a synapse is a synapse it is spelled as s y n a p s e a synapse is a place where two neurons meet so let's say we have got a red neuron right i'll just draw a very simple neuron over here all right so let's say like this is the neuron here over here this is the body of the neuron i'll come to the structure of the neuron in a minute so this neuron you know comes 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 and it it ends over here it's a red neuron and there is a green neuron which which starts from here which has got a cell body of course and it goes somewhere else and gives this information some someone else so this part so this part of the body of the of the whole system is called the synapse so this part of it is called the synapse so what happens in a synapse is that uh, there are neurotransmitters right what are neurotransmitters is there peptides or peptide like proteins or you know there they are some molecules which are packed in a particular uh, sac which is called the synaptic vesicle and these vesicles are basically present in uh, you know in the in the in the neuronal uh, axon endings right and what what do these sacs do the sacs you know they sometimes break off right so there is a sac here which is broken off and let's say these red uh, things you know red uh, uh, let's say you know these are the neurotransmitter molecules these are being released and there is a, a neuron after that you know which has got its um, dendritic endings dendrites you know aligned in such a way that they would catch these neurotransmitters you now let's say this is the dendritic uh, these are the dendritic arborizations dendritic extensions this is the cell body you know this is the neuron ending over here so what happens is that there are these uh, neurotransmitters which come from uh, you know wh which 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 come from the previous neuron and they enter into they enter or you know bring about some certain changes in the next neuron so this is how the neuro neurotransmitter you know uh, brings about changes in the next cell you know this our synapse works we'll come to each of these details again in the future lectures but you know i just wanted to give you an overview of how the nervous system works now uh, in order to um, end this lecture uh, i would want to draw a neuron in the next slide but then uh, before that let me tell you that uh, you know all neurons are different a neuron is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system so the neuron that i'm going to draw now is uh, is it, it's a it, it's a very simple neuron i'll first draw the cell body so let's say this is the cell body right it has got a cytoplasm it has got a nucleus in between these are the dendrites of the neuron right what do dendrites do they collect information right these are the dendrites they collect information so let's say that you know the, all the information that are being gathered are gathered from this particular area uh, all the all the dendrites are somehow you know, localized in this area i'll color this area with the pink you know so this is the area from where the neuron is collecting its information this is a certain part of the brain a certain part of the body or a certain part of the brain and from there what the neuron is doing is that it is taking the information through its axon 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 and it has got a place where it can dump its neurotransmitter and what do i mean by dumping neurotransmitter i showed you in the in the previous slide there is a synapse it can be a synapse with a muscle it can be a synapse with another neuron we'll have extensive lectures on how what are the different types of synapses and how things work in a synapse so again I'll, I'll color that region green right so this is the place this is another uh, 
you know uh, site in the body it can be inside the brain or inside the nervous system or it can be in another part of the body right so this is area number this is let's say area number one and this is area number two so what does the nervous system what does a nerve do what does a neuron do it transmits information from one part of the body to another part it's a connective tissue it's a connective or uh, tissue or connective organ right so, but then also we must not forget we must not forget that this neuron has you know since it is going it is it's such a long neuron it must have a sheath around it right so there are certain specialized cells called oligodendrocytes which form a sheath uh, you know, covering over the neuron uh, in order to uh, maintain the electrical conductivity right so there is an action potential which comes up in the axon hillock of the neuron and then this electricity is th th is actually voltage is actually potential difference which is being transferred from the axon hillock to the axon ending uh, this sheath has got a spe specific name. It is called the it's called the myelin sheath. M Y E L I N S H E A T H. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and you must follow Biology Kira in order to have more lectures like this. All the best.